You're listening to Listening to Books and Bobo, a book club and podcast featuring books by Asian and Asian American authors. My name is Mervyn Yue. And I'm Rira Yu. And it is the uh, middle of January. So, you know what that means? It's time for another edition of Books and Bobo Book News, where we go over the new releases, publishing, and other news in the Asian American literary world. Um, I don't know why I explained it that way, but we're going <laughs> to just stick with it. Yeah, I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> How are you doing, Rira? Um, I'm doing okay. Uh, Have you been able to avoid this like death plague that's been going around? The super flu? Oh, the super flu? Yeah. Well, considering that I like have been locking myself in my apartment and not leaving. (laughs) Yeah, I've been pretty much safe. That's nice. Um, I caught two versions of it. I caught a cold when I was in China because I was climbing a mountain in the um, rain. I say climbing a mountain. I was like going upstairs to like a temple. And then after I got home, I caught whatever was going around here. And so uh, it's, been a, it's been a pretty sicky January so far. But uh, I'm healthy now, but I'm about to go to um, Sundance. You're about to go to a cold um, state. To do some coverage uh, for another podcast that I produce. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But good thing is I have all my winter gear with me. I have my coat. I have my boots. I got my vests. I got, you know, you know how like in winter... You don't really care if you look good. You just want to stay warm. I don't know what you're talking about. When I was living in New York, all of my winter gear were like really nice. I actually really cared about like how oh, nice my coats and my I, boots were. I don't. I don't care at all. <laughs> you should bring one of those. Uh, what is it, like red ginseng drinks that they sell at like the Asian supermarkets? It's really good for preventing colds. Is that what your mom tells you? Um. I guess, but I drink it as an adult. And considering (laughs) that I haven't gotten sick during this death plague, well... Yeah, my mom makes this weird... um, I don't even know what to call it. But it has ginseng in it. And it has Coke. What? Yeah, like (laughs) boiled Coke, like hot Coke with ginger. Uh Oh. I think the um, the like, desired effect is to coat your throat. Oh, okay. Which is, you know, I'm pretty sure the red ginseng drink that you buy at supermarkets it's literally like herbal tea mixed in with ginseng, which <laughs> which is like not bad. There's no like secret ingredient or anything. I mean, it's just yeah, it's just ginseng, right? It's just just um, is it an herb? It's not an herb. It's like a root. It's a root. Anyways. Um, it's the middle of January. Rira's been hard at work, as always, compiling all our new releases and book news that comes across our news desk. And um, how's it looking? There's a lot of books in January, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure I missed a lot. But it's all right. Well, you know, if you did miss any, um, I'm sure our fellow book club members will help us uh, fill in the blanks. Again, if you'd like to chat Asian American book news with um, your fellow Asian American book enthusiasts, you can come to our Goodreads group. Just search Books and Boba at Goodreads.com. Um, oh yeah, don't forget our January book is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. So hopefully you all are. Hard at work reading. I haven't started it, to be honest. Uh, this might be a book, an audio book, but we'll see. I have a lot of downtime in Sunday. Yeah, you're, you're, so, you know, you're taking a flight. So. Yeah, so hopefully I can make a make a sizable dent. It's actually it's bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I don't think it's longer than uh, any like tome books. I think <laughs> it's manageable. Like I wouldn't give someone like uh like a 700 page book to read in one month that is a little <laughs> bit much even for me yeah um but uh if you have read the book um go ahead and start um, discussing it on our goodreads forum we have a thread going for our january book club pick and we've already had a couple people a post about it so yeah also yeah. we will be taking comments and uh yeah. questions if you have any any um, strong takes you'd like to share with the group on the podcast, um, please, 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 um, let's say uh, it, we'll, we'll probably record our discussion at the end of the month. So as long as you get it in by like, you know, like the thirtieth, yeah, ish, yeah, ish, um, we should be able to uh, get it on the pod. But 
on that note, let's get to the purpose of the episode, which is to let you know what new books are coming out this month. Um, Reba, why don't you start with our first book? Our first book is My Friend Fear, Finding Magic in the Unknown by Mira Lee Patel, published by Tartar Perigee, and it released on January 2nd. A mix of personal reflections, inspirational quotes, questions for reflection, and breathtaking watercolor visuals, My Friend Fear asserts that having big fear is an opportunity to make big changes, to discover the remarkable potential inside ourselves. So another picture book, I assume? It's a self-help book. Okay, nice. Um, Next up is Escape from Aleppo by N.H. Senzai. Uh, published by Paula Wiseman Books, released on January 2nd. It is December 17th, 2010, Nadia's 12th birthday and the beginning of the Arab Spring. Soon, anti-government protests erupt across the Middle East and one by one countries are thrown into turmoil. As civil war flares in Syria and bombs fall across Nadia's home city of Aleppo, her family decides to flee towards the Turkish border. Inspired by current events, this novel sheds light on the complicated situation in Syria that has led to an international refugee crisis and tells the story of one girl's journey to safety. By the way, Escape from Aleppo is a middle grade novel. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think I, th- I think there's always like this debate of whether children's books and middle grade novels should have like darker themes. Mm. But like I-, I personally believe that you can't shelter your kid from everything. Yeah. And it's. And I think it's actually better for like development to know about uh, like dark, what's going on. In yeah, the what's world. going on in the right. world and like how like like how I don't want to say how the real world works, but like you know, kind of like dip their toe into like how the world is like and how unfair it can be sometimes, and how to confront it in a positive manner. Um. What's next? Uh, Next is The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Massey, published by Soho Press, and it released on January 9th. Set in 1920s India, The Widows of Malabar Hill follows Purveen Mystery, uh, Bombay's first female lawyer, as she investigates a suspicious will on behalf of three Muslim widows living in full purda when the case takes a turn towards the murderess. I love historical fiction mixed with murder mystery. <laughs> love it. Um, next up is Sea of Strangers by Lang Leave, published by Andrews McMeal Publishing, released on January 9th. Uh, sea of Strangers by Lang Leave picks up from her previous international best-selling books, including Love and Misadventure, Lullabies, and The Universe of Us. Leave's newest collection of poetry and prose explores themes of self-discovery and empowerment. So this is her next collection of short stories and poetry, right? Uh, I think it's mostly poetry. Mm. Um, but yeah, we interviewed uh, Lang Leave in an earlier episode. Yeah, we, we talked to her about her uh, uh, Sad Girls. debut novel, yeah. uh, Sad Girls. Uh, so congrats to Lang for her new book. Check it out. I remember her telling us about it like <laughs> in that interview, too. So it's like, it's like mind-blowing that so much time has passed. Love it. Uh, next up is The Boat People by Sharon Bala, published by Doubleday Books, released on January 9th. When a cargo ship carrying Mahindan and 500 fellow refugees from Sri Lanka reaches Vancouver's shores, the young father thinks he and his six-year-old son can finally start a new life. Instead, the group is thrown into a detention processing center with government officials and news headlines speculating that among the boat people are terrorists responsible for countless suicide attacks. As the refugees become subject to heavy interrogation, Mahindan begins to fear that a desperate act taken in Sri Lanka to fund their escape may now jeopardize his and his son's chance for asylum. Um, Love, Hate, and Other Filters by Samir Ahmed, published by Soho Teen, released on January 16th. Um, High school senior Maya Aziz is torn between worlds. Her parents expect her to be a good Indian daughter by attending a college close to their suburban Chicago home and pairing off with an older Muslim boy her mom deems suitable. But Maya has other plans. Her dreams is to study filmmaking at NYU. However, when Maya musters up the courage to break the news to her parents, a terrorist attack occurs in another Midwestern city. In an instant, Maya's community, consumed by fear and hatred, becomes unrecognizable, and her life changes forever. This is one of the more highly anticipated YA novels this year. Um, I'm definitely going to go buy it as yeah. soon as I 
have money. <laughs> <laughs> That's a twist. I mean, it goes from like your typical YA setup to like, oh, here are things that, you know, brown people have to deal with these yeah. days because of things that happen around the world. Uh, like, I'm really glad that there are there are books um middle grade and young adult that tackle the topic of islamophobia and how uh young people have to deal with it yeah. in, on like an everyday basis like there was um that thing you call a heart by shiba khan and uh and amina's voice like there are a lot of uh books like that mm-hmm. last year and i'm hoping that it kind of continues this year we'll see but yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully next. we'll be ch- checking out some of those books ourselves too yeah, yeah. Uh, next up is Everything Here is Beautiful by Mira T. Lee published by Pamela published by Pamela Dorman Books released on January 16th told from alternating perspectives Everything Here is Beautiful is about the bond between two sisters frayed by mental illness when their mother dies and her younger sister Lucia starts hearing voices it's up to Miranda the older responsible one to fight for the help her sister needs But Lucia impetuously plows ahead, marrying a big-hearted older man only to leave him suddenly to have a baby with a young Latino immigrant. When Lucia inevitably crashes, Miranda leaves her own self-contained life in Switzerland to rescue her sister again. But only Lucia can decide whether she wants to be saved. And that is Everything Here is Beautiful by Mira T. Lee. Good to see um, where people tackle mental illness, too. Yeah, that is a topic that definitely needs to be told more in stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next up is Mark's Woman by Rati Mehotra, uh, published by Harper Voyager, releases on January 23rd. Um, Kira is the youngest Mark's woman in the Order of Kali, a highly trained sisterhood of elite warriors who are armed with deadly telepathic blades and sworn to protect the people of Asiana or Asiana uh, or Asiana. Brie was not impressed with my joke. Like all sisters of the Order, Kira has pledged to repudiate her former life, yet she secretly desires to avenge her dead family. When her beloved mentor dies and Tamsin, the powerful, dangerous mistress of mental arts, assumes control of the Order, Kira is forced on the run. She's certain that Tamsin murdered her mentor, and now she must find proof before her sisterhood turns down a path of darkness. Uh, Lots of things there that I Yeah. (laughs) I heard uh, the world is pretty much like a vastly unpopulated Asia. So Mm. that does sound interesting. Um, Next up, we have A Land of Permanent Goodbyes by Atia Abawi. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, If not, please correct me. Just go with it. Published by (laughs) Philomel Books. Releases on January 23rd. The novel follows Tarek, a Syrian teenager, as he journeys through Syria, Turkey, Greece, Macedonia, and Germany after a bomb strikes his city and kills most of his family members. Destiny serves as an omniscient narrator, depicting the Syrian conflict as part of a long chain of struggles spanning through time. It's interesting that uh, Destiny is like a sentient being, yeah. Like the only other book that I've read that kind of does a similar thing is The Book Thief. Uh, and Death is like a narrator there. So, okay. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, it's um, like an interesting narr- narrative, narrative device. Tool, device. Yeah, device. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, next up is Cast in Deception The Chronicles of Elantra, number 13 by Michelle Sagara, published by Mira Books, releases on January 23rd. Private Kaylin Nea thought her home couldn't possibly get more crowded, especially with politically dangerous guests. But when one of her housemates, Anarion, decides to undertake the barony test of name, his friends refuse to let him face his task alone. And Caelan's sentient home, Helen, is the only suitable structure of shielding the rest of Elantra from the magnitude of their power. As political tensions ramp up, the shadows beneath the high halls are seeking a freedom that has never been possible before. Caelan must find a way to keep those shadows from escaping, or that freedom will destroy her city, the empire, and everything she holds dear. Wow, number 13 is series. Have you heard of this series before? Um, Like, here and there, but like, I obviously don't know anything about the world or the ca- or the characters but yeah it's impressive 13 th- 13 books in the series oh i'm sure if you're a fan of the chronicles of elantra much of what i just said makes sense to you <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's the um current list of new releases for january 2018 
Again, if there's any books that we missed or any new announcements that come up, um, please let us know on the Books and Boba Goodreads forums where you can discuss um, with your fellow book club members. Uh, but on that note, let's get into the news. There's been a couple big breaking news, especially in terms of Asian American written books being turned into film, like, film and TV projects, yeah. right? First up, Hulu is developing a half-hour comedy adapted from Jay Chang's The Wangs vs. The World, a novel about a wealthy but fractured Chinese immigrant family that had it all, only to lose every last cent, and about the road trip they take across America that binds them back together. Uh, John M. Chu will direct the script if it gets greenlit for a pilot, um, and I hope it does. It seems right up his alley. It's like the perfect follow-up to Crazy Yeah, Rich Hulu Asians. is definitely chasing after that Crazy Rich Asians <laughs> uh, but uh, following like, so i've seen the book on your bookshelf but i have read not it <laughs> read it it's one of those books that are on my bookshelf but i haven't cracked it open it sounds like if this just becomes like asian american arrest development i'll be very happy i just feel like, i just feel like, like a like, shitty family i feel like, like it would be though because um i did read maybe like the first uh chapter a long time ago when i first got the book and I remember, like, the dad being, like, really funny, uh-huh. like, really self-entitled and, and being like, man, if this was, like, if we were living in China, like, people would people would uh, be more subservient to me. And, <laughs> and it, it's just, it's so ridiculous. And um, I haven't read, like I said, I haven't read the book, but it sounds fun. Yeah. And I've heard great things about it. Uh, Constance Wu actually recommended uh, The Wangs versus the World for Book of the Month Club. So, uh she personally recommended it. Nice. So if that, like, <laughs> I'm guessing that it was good. Yeah. And we have another book by an Asian American author that is getting adapted for for the screen. Yeah. Not TV, though. It's film. Uh, so LD Entertainment has optioned the rights to Celeste Ng's 2014 debut novel, Everything I Never Told You. Uh, I need to correct you there. 2014 debut novel and Books and Bulb Up Book Club Pick. <laughs> Everything I never told you. I was going to mention that we it was like our second book we should club have, pick. We should create a badge or sticker to put on all the books that we pick. That is something we have to talk about and in the we next can go potluck into meeting. And stick it on every single book that we pick. <laughs> Books and Boba approved. Official. It's got to be one of those removable stickers. Yeah. So we don't get in trouble, but. I think we should we should we should partner with a bookstore that will let us do that. Someone should sponsor us so we can buy like ten copies of that book and just have <laughs> stickers and send it out to people. Uh, but like shipping books is really expensive. But yeah, uh, some news about who is involved in the adaptation. Michael De Luca uh, is on board as a producer, and he's produced The Social Network, Captain Phillips, Moneyball. And uh, Julia Cox is attached to write the screenplay. Now, I told Marvin this earlier. Um, I am a little bit concerned about how uh, how the Asian American representation is going to be in this adaptation. Because mm. uh, Julia Cox is not Asian American. And I'm not saying that, like, you, she can't do the research or, and, like, seek consultants. But, like... It does worry me a little because, uh, I don't know, like, I, I'm a bit concerned. Like, I, I I do hope that they get, like, an Asian American writer or director on board soon. I mean, I think, I mean, they have Celeste Ng, who is an Asian American writer, who's yeah, but some, But sometimes, I don't know how involved Celeste Ng is on this project. Mm. I mean, I'm... I'm putting faith in her that she wouldn't have sold the rights to her book to a production company that doesn't care. Yeah, I mean, following her Twitter and her like just like social persona, I would imagine representation is very important to her, especially since it's her book. Um, but yeah, I mean, it. I think it, it's like it's it's a um, it's a state of being that we're always suspicious yeah. when we don't see any like. Because the thing is, yeah. like most most of the characters in that cast are mixed race Asian, mm-hmm. Asian mixed race Asian Americans and that experience is very different for um I, like it's yeah. it's just like a different experience and and like I just hope that they get it right. I have so much anxiety over this. I know. And it's something that we we talked a lot about 
when we discussed the book, um, you can check out. I think it's like episode two. Of yeah, Books it was like Boba. it was literally episode two. It was the second um, book that we read for this book club. This is a story about a second and third generation Asian American family. Like the main, the dad is second generation. Is second generation. So I hope they don't cast like some like. You know, like, yeah, like don't cast someone uh, with an accent with an accent because he doesn't have one. I mean, his whole character is he teaches like like American, American history. history. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited because I think this is a story which can represent the Asian American experience, especially when it comes to family expectations and like the microaggressions, microaggressions, and also just the feeling of never measuring up. Yeah. Um, this is it. Like this story is it's a beautiful story. Rira and I both enjoyed it a lot, even though it's kind of depressing. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but it was still a really <laughs> good book and it left an it left an impression on like our book club. So yeah. I am very invested in in the result of this adaptation. I'm yeah, I'm eager to see casting news and how how it goes, but um it's definitely a story that deserves to be made well, and we're hoping that that's the case. You know, there's a lot of um, film adaptations of uh, books by Asian American authors. We have Crazy Rich Asians. It's mm-hmm. coming out in August. August? August yeah, yeah, August. August 17th. Uh, and then we, we have To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. Right. Uh, the Hotel on the Corner of uh, right, Bitter Jamie and Sweet Ford's. by Jamie Ford. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else, but that's that's like four Wings books. Versus the world. Yeah, I mean um, the two books that we we just announced. Yeah. That's six books like being made into movies. That is that is really something. Like I have never seen this happen in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> I feel like Hollywood is starving for stories that are different that come from like a diverse place, and there's so many like diverse authors out there. Like writing YA fiction, writing adult fiction, writing even children's fiction. Yeah. That, you know, um, I mean, even in like black literature, there's a lot of ad- adaptations, right? And The Hate You Give. That's yeah, that's coming made. out yeah. in 2018. They already wrapped production. Yeah. I there's think there's such a huge source of unique and diverse stories that's already there that has a track record and has a fan base. I mean, I mean, like diversity begins on the page. Mm hmm. Like whether it's a, an original script or if it's an adaptation, that's why it is so important to pay attention to books by by authors of color <laughs> because those can be made into plays, into movies. Yeah. And I get really mad when we have a lot of actor friends in L.A., obviously, because of Hollywood. Because we live here. Yeah, yeah because we live here. I get so <laughs> mad when they say that they don't read books Mm. And I'm like, you're an actor. You should be one of the most well-read people I know because you're going to be acting out characters who are coming from books. And of course, like you should have training in reading plays. And I don't know. I get I get really like annoyed by that. But that's just that's just me being I mean, like a perfectionist. Is that something they teach though? I'm sure like writers, they tell you you should read all the time. But actors, I don't know. No, should, actors that- should read more like i don't know if that's because i'm from like i went to school in new york Mm. and like actors were told you need to read a lot (laughs) and then i moved to like la and that same uh value isn't isn't there Uh, i don't know like it depends on who your uh teacher is mentor is and where you were trained but yeah i get really annoyed when actor friends uh, say that they haven't read a lot of books. But yeah, LD Entertainment, you're on notice. Don't mess this up or Rira will be very angry. And I mean, I'm no one it. of consequence, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter if you threaten them. <laughs> We're going to get all our Twitter followers to talk crap. Oh um, but yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic because because Celeste is involved. And hopefully she is going to be very involved like it's it's like her baby it's it's her debut novel it's so. her debut novel yeah i actually really want little fires everywhere to be made into a movie i think if this gets made like that's next yeah that's a that's a yeah like that's that another. that would be a really good movie like even better than everything i never told you because mm. like you have such a diverse cast not just like racially but just like economically and like uh generation wise so it would be a really good movie. Yeah. Someone should 
you know, pitch it. I'm sure it's already making the rounds. That's true. <laughs> uh, our last bit, bit of news. Um, so earlier last week, uh, some someone on Twitter criticized the names of uh, the Indian American characters in Sandhya Menon's novels. Uh, Sandhya Menon is the author of When Dimple Met Rishi, and I forgot the title of her second book, but Twinkle from Twinkle with Love. From Twinkle with Love, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the tweeter said that Dimple and Twinkle were silly names, and mm-hmm. then a couple of people informed her that those names were common Indian names, and uh, and then the tweeter wrote, "quote." No, but pretty sure they aren't Indian names. Sounds like made up contemporary names to me. Mm. And holy crap, it 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 was a thing on Twitter for for a hot second and <laughs> and like Sonia Menon like said like hey, like I'm Indian. I was born in India and came to the states when I was 15. Like I know my Indian names. Why are you criticizing an own voice's author? on whether their culture is correct in their books. It's it's so dumb. <laughs> I can't think of a better <laughs> word. It's like like to make the statement, sure, whatever. You don't know any better. But when multiple people from that culture are correcting you on that, like your answer shouldn't be, no, I'm pretty sure I'm right. Like you have this tweet that's getting traction for the wrong reasons. And instead of doing damage control, or instead of like yeah. setting the record straight, like oh I didn't know, I'm sorry, or like I didn't know that, that's interesting, right? Yeah, because because the thing is, like the people who corrected her were pretty polite. They were just like, yeah. oh, just so you know, like they are common Indian names. Yeah, and it wasn't until she responded that people were like, oh this this is dumb. This like is... WTF? This person's yeah. a troll. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, and like naming traditions are different by culture. And if you're not from that culture, then shut up, <laughs> yeah. shut up and listen. Um, but but um, the funny thing is, uh, Sanya Menon's uh, Twitter username is now uh, Dimple is a real name. Yeah. And I, I just like bursted out laughing when I saw that. I feel like it's, I mean, it's, I don't want to get all our news from Twitter, but that's where the social conversation is this, these days. And hopefully like stuff like this is a learning lesson yeah and just so people know i don't get all of my book news from twitter i like check <laughs> publishers weekly and other uh publishing sites and i i, I do want to i do want to mention um because we didn't say any uh book deals or uh any like publishing mm. news for like our news section well not publishing news but like specifically like rights and and book deals the reason for that is that usually publishers weekly uh posts post that on tuesdays and i don't think they have posted it yet so um <laughs> if we might go over those in the next episode depending on whether or not there are uh yeah. asian american authors and on we'll, that list we'll, we'll catch you up eventually so don't worry um I'm on it. I'm yeah. on it, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, once again, our January 2018 book club pick is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. Um, how far have you gotten? I haven't started. Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like I'm going to binge through it, even though I told myself I shouldn't do that. Oh, it's the best way to read, for sure. I'm just going to have to uh, wake up early on, <laughs> like, on a weekend and just... Uh, power through it yeah um but on that note um that'll do it for this episode of books and boba thanks again for listening um again if you have anything to add to the book news um if you have any feedback for us about the show um please sound off on our goodreads forum um go to goodreads.com and type in books and boba and uh for those of you new to the show don't forget to check out our interview um that we put up last week with fun lee the author of jade city uh, we had a lot of fun talking to her about her book and about the fantasy genre in general don't forget to if you do like what you hear subscribe to us on apple Podcasts, google play or wherever you find your podcasts um, leave us a nice rating review um that's something we haven't really been asking a lot but um if you do like our show um give us like a uh, nice rating i was about to say five star but you don't have to you can give us a four star and be fine <laughs> um and write something nice about us um, or or like if you have any complaints write it but still give us a five star <laughs> five star rating i will read it yeah. if it's a five star rating and, um, it's a, and it's a complaint it'll help us get out to more people looking for 
podcasts like ours. And if you know anybody who's interested in reading, especially books by Asian Asian Americans, um, please share our podcast. It really helps us out. Um, word of mouth is really the best way to um, grow a podcast. Yeah. And um, we're really happy that our family, our book club is growing. You guys are all our members and our um all love equally <laughs> I, I feel like out of the podcasts in our potluck collective we are probably the nerdiest and, sm- and like the no. i don't know like i think we're the most active on twitter too but that's all thanks to rira and her social media skills my uh <laughs> my manic personality <laughs> no i appreciate it um because i cannot with twitter but uh <laughs> well that's that's it for this episode stay yeah. tuned for our next episode which will be our discussion on pachinko yeah don't forget to read and then we'll see you next time All right bye. keep reading bye books and boba was hosted by marvin yue and we were you and produced and edited by marvin yue books and boba is a proud member of the potluck podcast collective a collective of podcasts featuring unique voices from the asian american community if you liked our show, you might also like They Call Us Bruce. They Call Us Bruce is a podcast where hosts Jeff Yang and Phil Yu present an unfiltered conversation about what's happening in Asian America. You can find They Call Us Bruce and the other great programs of the Potluck Collective by going to the website www.podcastpotluck.com. Mm-hmm.